Hi, my name is Leon Rope, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting April. And I uh, hope you had a good trading week. If not, don't worry, this is a new week. As long as you didn't blow up your account, you should be all right. Remember, keep your risk low and uh, you can define your risk and your rewards. You know, as long as you go for a good risk reward, you should be okay. So um, looking at the uh, the week ahead, a week uh, of uh, starting the 8th of April, and this is from Trading Economics, and it says this week the United States will capture investors' attention with its inflation rate and FOMC minutes. Adding to the watch list are Michigan consumer confidence, producer prices, as well as exports and import prices, complemented by several speeches from Federal Reserve officials. Globally, interest rate decisions are on the agenda for the euro area, Canada and New Zealand. That's going to be very important. Um, in China, Spotlight will be on consumer and producer prices alongside trade data and new yuan loans. Europe's focus will be also on Germany, Germany's foreign trade and industrial production and UK's February GDP reading and industrial production. Finally, Australia will release NAB business confidence and Westpac consumer confidence data and Japan consumer confidence. So uh, some sentiment readings there. And um, so, yeah, let's go over um, some of the uh, fundamentals and uh, the charts in a bit more detail. But before actually we do, just getting into some trade uh, updates and something uh, I guess I'll share a trade on um, natural gas. It's not really a trade um, and, and a pair and, um, uh, that I talk about, I guess, on, on this channel. I do trade some commodities and um, I'll give an update on the Canadian dollar yen as well as the euro yen. It's, I haven't taken any new um, uh, uh, Forex trades, but um, I have taken some profit on the Canadian dollar yen uh, pair. We're looking at natural gas, um, uh, looking at this from a technical analysis perspective. Uh, this made all the sense in the world to um, to get involved in this uh, in this pair because we had on a daily time frame chart. We had a nice demand zone here. Right. And so um, you can see where prices made some higher highs, higher lows here. And, um, you know, basically putting away and what does that really kind of tell us that tells us that this area here the higher it moves away from the low and that demand zone that actually that's a bargain area that's demand there there's demand at that particular price now when prices come down here um you know you're going to have bargain hunters now no one knows exactly where prices are going to turn right um because at the end of the day investors and anyone who is um looking to buy natural gas you know wants a bit of time and also to to kind of buy as much natural gas as they can um hence the reason why you had you know a couple of weeks of prices moving sideways and then it went kind of cheaper right and so the absolute bargain hunters because this was a bargain down here prices were seen as a bargain right here and prices went to the upside so that was really um, uh, the play and uh, where I entered in fact was on a four hour candle and I'll just show you the uh, the entry it was right here with a stop loss um, was somewhere around there and um, I actually held it for about a two to one to the top of this uh, this little mini range auction right here and then took off around 80% uh, profit off this and then I've been um, basically moved my stop up as well to just below this swing nearly got stopped out on the remaining position on uh, as as prices came down um, but if I even if I do get stopped out I'm being, I'm being stopped out on really just 20% uh, um, uh, uh, of profit um, of, of the open position right and so taking the majority of profit off here at uh, two to one and then i um now just swing trading the rest so i can't lose in fact i've banked the majority of profits so really that's that was the trade and the uh, the trade setup um on natural gas um figured it was a decent um opportunity and really that's the whole point in uh trading 
um, supply and demand really is actually understanding where bargains are, right? As well as the fundamentals behind uh, natural gas and why natural gas is likely to be a bargain. You can you can look at it from a price perspective, but also fundamentally you need to at least um, understand that um, you know uh, the the fundamental side of things and what gives something value. So that was really it and made a bit of money on that as a trade update on the CAD yen. Um, so this was the trade and I've been talking about this for the past uh, maybe a couple weeks now and um, uh, it's really uh, kind of moved uh, a bit on the slow side but um, it still worked out anyway. This is now a break-even trade and the reason why it's a, it's a break-even trade is, is because um, as I've explained in the previous week's videos, um, what I typically do is I enter into three positions, right? I'll try to enter into three positions. So I enter into a market order and then a 50% pending order and then about a 95% pending order sell. And so if prices ever come back, which they may actually managed to do, and I nearly got stopped out on this as well, um, right here um, on the Thursday. It didn't quite stop me out. I think it was about three pips away from being stopped out. But... Um, uh, luckily, I didn't, but what it allows me to do then, if, because if I'm right about this whole trade idea and prices eventually reverse, if I'm getting in at these highs up here, then it allows me better risk reward on the trade idea, right? So rather than just entering into one position down here, which is what a lot of traders, um, you know, typically do, um, you know, I enter or I, I look for pullbacks and I understand the, the pros and cons of this because ultimately if prices continue to go straight down, then of course I would only in, really enter into one position. Whereas somebody would say, okay, well, I would have, you know, um, entered into, you know, their, their main position or whatever it was on, on the on the entry, right? There are pros and cons of everything in trading and I found that this has worked uh, for me for um, many, many years in looking for a pullback and really, again, it, it, it ties into my buying for cheaper um, um, ethos, right? So on this on this situation, um, I've managed to, you know, prices managed to pull back to the 50% and the 95%. And when it triggered that, that's my risk reward, right? And now, and then what I did was I took, again, profit off at around about a two to one to kind of cover these two positions, right? So there was a 0.1% position here 0.1% 0.1% so that's 0.3% um, in total and then at a 2 to 1 I managed to cover these two positions now because I would have made 0.2% on this and then I can swing trade now these two positions yeah that's what the plan is and so with the uh, the, the Canadian dollar looking to cut rates and the Bank of Japan looking to hike rates we should eventually see. It hasn't happened just yet. Of course, no one knows the exact timing of this. Um, but, you know, if if I'm right about this overall trade idea over time, then I will start to get those longer um, trends and I can ride the trend to the downside. And especially this week, um, as the Bank of Canada may be a bit, if they are a bit dovish, you know, on the, what's that, the Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday if they come out and they're um, and they're dovish, then that just plays pretty much into my hands. So yeah, let's see. And again, that trade really is at a break even now. And um, the euro yen again been in this for for about the same time. Now it's pulled back to my fifty percent um, uh, uh, pending order. And so now what I need this week is for prices to come down to maybe about a one to one to get myself to a break even. And then I can swing trade this position, right? If it comes up and triggers me in to, you know, the, uh, the higher position, then I can look for, uh, you know, better risk reward and cover these two positions and then see um, where we are from there. Remember, this is more of a longer term play. It's more of a swing trade. And again, if Europe are going to cut rates in June, and the Bank of Japan are looking to hike, there's a divergence there. So this is where the play, um, where I'm looking to um, uh, swing trade this to the downside. So let's see what happens with that. So that's a bit of a trade update. Now getting into um, the dollar and the dollar index. And so uh, moving back to the daily um, and understanding really uh, when we look at the 
the dollar index, and this is a equally weighted uh, dollar index. I'll leave a link in the description box or at the top right hand side of the screen where you can watch um, a video on how to uh, plot the equally weighted uh, dollar index as well as other currency indexes on your chart. And I really highly advise you, you use these because it gives you really the bigger picture as to what the dollar is doing um, against other currencies that we trade in, in an equal measure, which I think is a bit more accurate than using, for example, the uh, the, the dollar index, the DXY or the USDX. Anyways, um, so my bias has always been to kind of buy this year. Uh, you know, I've, I've kind of been maybe a bit cool in the dollar um, during this period, but it's really never been a sell, an all-out sell for me. I, have, I did sell the dollar um, somewhere around here, but then once um, inflation came in, um, higher again it was just really kind of buying the dollar I'm taking advantage of some some short-term sentiment on that but overall the beginning of the year um, if you look at my past videos and the guys in the uh, in the um, private mentoring group will know that you know we've pretty much been long on dollars for for quite a while and so I think that is likely to continue reason being is because um, you've had basically a blowout jobs data rise uh, chances of delayed fewer rate cuts, Fed rate cuts. And so a strong jobs market gives Fed time to gain clarity on inflation and investors paired back bets for rate cuts in June or July. Now, why is that? Right. Why is um, the data supporting later rate uh, cuts? And it's really because when you have a growing economy, right, um, you typically don't want to, uh, central banks don't want to um, cut in that environment, right? So their, their main goal really is to, is to get inflation down to their 2% target. Yeah, they want to get inflation down to their 2% target. And so um, if they end up um, uh, cutting rates and inflation is not a 2%, it's, it's above 2%, um, then that could actually push inflation higher, right? Now, when it comes to the job side of things, um, normally uh, when uh, central banks cut rates, uh, GDP is normally in some sort of recession or heading, at least heading into a recession. Now, of course, with uh, unemployment data coming in lower, jobs coming in higher, that pretty much um, signals that the economy is not really heading into a recession. So why would the uh, central bank need to really kind of cut rates, right? There's no need to support the economy by making borrowing costs lower because the economy actually is doing okay with interest rates um, at their, you know, currently at, I think it's 5.5%, right? So there's really no need to, 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 to kind of boost the economy by cutting rates and cheapen, cheapening loans and borrowing costs, right? If the economy is doing okay. So um, although inflation might be um, slightly higher, right, than the 2% target, and they are mandated, to be fair, to get it down to the 2% target, they're, gonna, they're likely to leave interest rates at 5.5%, um, hoping that inflation will gradually continue to go to their 2% target, but it gives them a bit more leeway to hold simply because the economy isn't you know, going into that recessionary period because typically when you have higher interest rates, what should happen is it should contract the economy. But obviously, 5.5% isn't enough to contract the economy because you've got, um, you know, blow out um, non-farm numbers, right? Non-farm payroll numbers. And so, um, you know, it basically says here, the biggest jobs gain in nearly a year boost the chances of the Federal Reserve officials will further delay cutting rates uh, from a two decade high and consider fewer reductions this year than anticipated. And that is reflected in the CME FedWatch tool. So if you keep an eye on this, um, you know, we can see that in June, right, if we click on, you've got May here, you've got June. And the chances now of a no change, basically a hold in rates in June, is now 48%, right? Pretty much nearly 
50-50. If you look at what the probability was a month ago, it was 25, the market was saying that it was a 25% chance of a hold and a 57% chance of a 25 basis point cut and a 16% uh, chance of a of a of a fifty percent or point five um, percentage point uh, cut, right? So, at the end of the day, the market has had to reprice the dollar higher because of cuts being um, you know priced out of the market. And so, you know, looking at that on a price chart, you know, you would expect prices to you know. Uh, 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 rise, but we do have, in fact, um, uh, CPI data. I think the PPI data this week, which is an inflation measure, and I think if that comes in as expected or slightly higher, I do think that the the the, uh, the market is likely to continue to price out the um, rate cuts or could price out rate cuts um, in July, which should send the dollar. Higher, so you know, as as traders and 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 um, who observe fundamental analysis, right? Um, a lot of the, the 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 approach really is to buy the rumor, right? R U M O U R, right? The rumor. Some people said it with just an R, um, but we also need the data to support that rumor, right? So it doesn't matter whether someone says, oh, well, you know, the, the, the Federal Reserve are going to cut in June. Yeah, fair enough. The market might start to price that in, but they will price it out if the data doesn't support the rumor. Yeah. So although it's, you know, great to have these forecasts from banks and um, and and economists and financial analysts yeah if the data is not supporting the official data is not supporting the rumor then actually that presents a really good opportunity to get involved and buy something for cheap or at least um, you know trade against uh, other people's biases who you know who've been talking about the the US should go into a recession now I'm not saying that the US ain't going is not going to going into a recession anything can happen there are risks and anything can happen at any time right war some sort of catastrophe etc financial crisis it could happen but at the moment right the dollar for me is continuing to be a buy based on the data so any pullbacks to demand zones on the dollar index, a uh, nice confluence for buy trades. And as long as the data still continues to support buying the dollar, and this is now the new narrative really, which is fewer Fed rate cuts. Um, so yeah, that's really where we are. Dollar yen, right? So what does that do for the dollar yen? The dollar yen, um, the yen's, um, I guess, strength to a certain degree is based on really not only their rate hikes, but um, the uh, the dollar and the Fed cutting rates. And so, um, although I'm a buyer of the uh, the yen, it's not against the US dollar. Um, it'd be more against the euro and the CAD, as you know, you've seen, because those currencies are looking to cut rates uh, first. Whereas, again, the more the market prices out rate cuts for the for the uh, Federal Reserve based on the data, um, you may actually see prices continuing to drift higher. Right, you may see prices continue to drift higher, and there have been calls for like one five five. But also as well, there are um, you know there is the the Bank of Japan could intervene and uh, to 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 prevent its currency uh, devaluing. And this week we had Raider says chance of hitting Bank of Japan price target or yes price target is basically inflation to rise from the summer. So this ended up being actually quite uh, bullish. For the uh, bank, um, for the Japanese yen, as uh, Uedo has been actually pretty, uh, pretty dovish over the past year, but now he's saying that you know um, they could start to reach their inflation target uh, of of you know above two percent, which would then mean continued or more uh, rate hikes, and so um, we saw a bit of a a. a uh, a rise in the uh, in the yen, and also as well, we saw Japan's two-year yield climb after Bank of Japan hike. Now, 
I asked a question on YouTube in the community section as to um, the relationship between interest rates and um, and uh, um, and bond yields. And the question was: When central banks raise interest rates, it often leads to an increase in bond yields. True or false? Now. If we look at this article when we've seen that Japan's two-year yield climbs after Bank of Japan rate hike, you would have to say, you know, it's true, right? It's true. It's not false. I think 91% of people uh, who participated, you know, got it right. So well done to you guys. And really the answer uh, is that higher bond yields make existing bonds less attractive, leading to a decrease in bond prices. This can result in capital losses for bondholders. So, um, you know, just simply put, and if you understand the relationship between bond prices and bond yields, when bond prices, bond prices and bond yields basically go, um, they're inverse. So in when uh, bond prices go higher, yields go lower. And when yields go higher, bond prices go lower. And this isn't going to be a, a bond, uh, uh, um, you know, session or explanation. But just if you understand that and understand that rule, then um, and understand also as well that investors are really looking for yields. And so if, um, let's say, for example, a bank uh, raises interest rates, yeah, um, then why would somebody um, who may be holding a yield and getting maybe 1%, right, on a bond yield, basically to hold government debt, yeah, why would they continue to want to buy uh, a, a treasury yield and hold government debt for, for 1%? And the, let's say, for example, the, the Bank of Japan are raising rates, yeah, and then they eventually hit maybe, I don't know, 2%, yeah? You'd rather just hold the currency over the bond yield, right? There's no point in holding government debt, right? You wouldn't really want to buy it so that way. And then, you know, prices uh, for, bo for bond yields goes down, right? Because the yield isn't great and then the prices go down because you'd rather just hold the actual currency and get, a, you know, a, an interest rate from the bank at uh, 2%. And so... In order to compensate, you know, bond um, uh, 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 holders and bond buyers who want to yield, yeah, because it's really all, you know, rich people, all, you know, very rich, all want, you know, it's all about yield and, and really just holding, uh, you know, and getting passive income, right? Um, so in order when for that to happen in terms of, um, you know, for, to attract traders into buying bond yields, right, rather than looking for yields elsewhere, bond yields have to go higher, right, to attract bond um, bond buyers, right, so that is really, you know, um, the, uh, the, the the kind of simple way to kind of look at this, right, so, you know, capital losses, right, for bondholders, they don't want that, and so in order to entice bondholders and, and buy government debt, basically, is what a bond is, um, you know, you have to offer higher yields when interest rates rise. So that is what it is. And that's what's happened right here. So Japan's two-year yield climbs off the Bank of Japan rate hike. Um, so, so yeah, that's really what it is. So for me, looking at the, uh, the, 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 the Bank of Japan, I'm still a buyer, um, on the on the yen, just not necessarily against the dollar at the moment. I don't think the dollar is is the best currency to trade it against, as I think it's one of the stronger currencies. I think the one of the weaker currencies would be the CAD and the euro, as well as the Swiss franc as well. And so, yeah, if you are looking to buy um, the uh, the dollar yen, then I think at the moment you're buying opportunities. Are a bit slim when it comes to looking at where demand is, strong demand is, you'd really have to wait for your prices to break through this supply zone, then pull back to a demand zone there. If you're looking at buying the um, the yen against the this currency, you really have to hope that this week inflation for the dollar uh, comes in way lower than expected. And I think that will um, cause the, uh, the dollar 
to uh, to fall in value. But either way, I'm not looking to trade this. I'm just looking to um, to watch it for now. Um, but those are really your options. Uh, CAD, dollar CAD. Um, again, uh, based off of what's happened this week, you would really think that the um, the dollar should be more of a buy uh, over the Canadian dollar. Um, I think a pullback into this area here should be decent in terms of uh, in terms of buying at value the one three four round number if you can get that if you are looking at shorting the uh, the dollar and the uh, and buying the Canadian dollar and shorting this pair then you're looking really at uh, some supply zones right there and you've got one right there but uh, I think currently, from what I see, I think right now the uh, US dollar has an edge. So I'm looking for more of a pullback into a demand zone before looking at going long. If, uh, if you're looking at trading that, that would be with the path of least resistance at the moment. The pound dollar, pound dollar is, um, uh, again, a bit of a tricky one to to. to to trade at the moment and it's really just based off of um, the fact that both currencies uh, potentially look into um, cut rates obviously in June or a bit later now there was some news out about the uh, the UK and it says that the UK company scaled back outlook for pay rises to less than 5% and um, UK companies expect expect a wage growth of less than 5% for the first time in almost two years, a long-awaited easing that will alleviate concerns at the Bank of England that soaring pay may keep feeding inflationary pressures. So the Bank of England and a lot of other central banks are actually watching um, uh, wage uh, inflation as it, it's, a, it's a major uh, contributor to inflation. So if wage inflation comes down, wage... Um, wage growth comes down then that should help overall inflation fall and if it does fall again you uh, pretty much will have um, the Bank of England look to probably cut rates a lot sooner and so um, you know pretty much it, it it's really kind of a 50 50 thing in terms of um, uh, there's not really no clear divergences at the moment but if you are looking to take this if you're looking to get you know go short you could look for moves up into this supply zone right if you're looking for demand and buying the pound against the dollar look for a move really back down into a fresher area of demand and um, for anyone who really wants to join the um, the mentoring group today is the last day so Sunday the 7th of April will be the last day to join uh, for a while um, I may reopen again in July maybe August um, again I just like to keep the uh, you know the intake on the smaller side and more limited and so um, yeah if you really want to get um, the really the information um, and a lot more information than what I actually provide on here and really get mentored in the fundamentals as well as the technicals um, today is really going to be the last day for a while for a good few months so um, you know go to trading180.com and uh, sign up if you can if you can't no worries just keep watching the free content I have plenty of free content that should keep you on the right path um, uh, with your trading and so uh, yeah if you are going to join I look forward to working with you so moving on to the uh, the pound yen and uh, again my opinion is that the pound yen overall should be really a sell um, based on again just pretty much everyone else cutting rates and the Bank of Japan looking to hike rates so um, yeah, if you are looking to buy the the dollar yen, just be mindful that once in, um, you know information comes out that they are looking to cut in June or later on this year, prices really should start to roll over. Uh, but in the short term, of course, nobody knows, right? No one knows which level is going to be the one that is going to 
um, you know, prices are going to reverse, right? So we just manage our risk accordingly. And if it works out, go for good reward. If it doesn't, just take another trade if the fundamentals say uh, to take those trades, right? So, um, so yeah, that's really where we are. My bias would be more to the downside. But if you are looking for buy trades, then you're looking for a pullback into that zone there or lower zone right there. Euro dollar. So, Again, my bias would be more on the short side simply because we do have um, really more uh, data supporting um, the potential for a rate um, a rate hold for the dollar, right? The data is supporting that. Also as well, it seems like the market is a lot more sure that the ECB will cut rates once a quarter starting in June, whereas again, we've just had the uh, information um, and the uh, the data showing that, you know, fewer rate cuts for the Fed and the fact that, you know, it could be priced out from June to July, right? And so, you know, going to the ECB, it's, um, it's, it's uh, it looks like more of a surer thing. So there's a bit more of a divergence appearing there. So my thing would be, um, where am I? I'm a bit all over the place. Sorry, one second. Yeah, my uh, directional bias would be uh, more to do with a short trade. So if we do come up a bit more and then we, you know, we do get the PPI data and CPI data this week supporting, um, you know, uh, inflation is a bit more sticky and a bit more stubborn, um, then I do think that, in fact, we should want to head to more to the downside it could happen like that could happen like that who knows right no one knows but ultimately i think the path of this resistance is still to the downside now they obviously the risk to the trade would be if inflation comes out right inflation measures come out and it's, it goes the other way right so we've got inflation rate year on year core inflation expected to kind of come in a bit lower uh year on year here actually uh that year on year oh sorry inflation year on year 3.4 Core inflation 3.7, core inflation month on month slightly down, slightly down. Um, so again, um, it's still probably a bit more sticky than uh, than than um, than the two percent. But ultimately, I do think that the the dollar is in a better place um, economically as well as um, fundamentally uh, than the than Europe. So I do think that any pullback should be short. Um, uh, should be short plays unless again there's a really kind of a shocking data that comes out um, you know causing the market to kind of price in rate cuts sooner in June right so that's really where we are euro dollar euro yen again I think this is more of a short play of course and um, you know we are in a bit of supply here so any pullbacks you can look for short trades if you think that the euro is going to be the weaker of the two and if the um if the european central bank are dovish this week in terms of their communication on what they want to do with interest rates then um pretty much uh you know you, you really should look for kind of short plays on this um but again not financial advice uh, euro pound euro pound i think the euro and, and the pound, it's a bit of a difficult one again. Um, not necessarily the most clearest, although I'll probably give the pound the edge. All right, I'll give it the edge in terms of um, in terms of rates because it's not necessarily known one hundred percent that they will cut in June. Although the market is trying to price that in, but I do think that if anything, um, any pullbacks, if I was to take this trade i would rather look for in fact you could even look for this to be a supply zone of course right there so i think probably now or just a bit higher decent shorts would be the play but um not really a pair that i'm looking to take um i'm looking to trade at all and there would be demand right there um so yeah those are really your options if you are again taking any kind of supply and demand trades you want to have the confluence with at least some level of support and resistance within that level as well as uh, levels that are really at the absolute lows or absolute highs right that's what that's what you're looking for or some of the things you're looking for anyway uh, Aussie dollar so Aussie dollar 
I would be more of a buy on Aussie dollar um, if um, the Fed are looking to cut rates sooner. If they once they start cutting rates, right? Once the Fed start cutting rates and inflation starts coming down, I think the Australian dollar is going to be a really nice buy. So um, yeah, I think any pullbacks into demand zones are really where it's at. Um, as a bit of a tip, you probably want to start to look to buy the um, the Aussie Swiss as well, uh, as the Swiss franc are looking to uh, to to cut rates um, continually. Their inflation came out uh, way lower than than forecast as well, so it puts pressure on the Swiss National Bank to continue to cut rates. And the uh, the Australian dollar um, and the RBNZ, uh, sorry not RBNZ, RBA will be. Uh, cutting rates uh, last it looks like so ultimately i think um you know the uh, the australian dollar is a buy at the moment not against the uh australia um, the, the us dollar but um against other currencies you might want to look for some buy trades and finally gold so gold just continually making these these higher highs for anyone who's invested in gold uh brilliant i'm actually a long-term buyer of gold um regardless of what happens in the short term you know with the dollar so this is looking nice for me but in terms of trading gold um again you've got nothing really these are all-time highs right so uh, it's a difficult to look for any kind of short you really want uh, the market to now determine um, whether you know price is expensive here by prices coming down and then looking for some sort of trade to the short side um, but if you're looking for long trades then of course you know it's just really kind of pullbacks now against the uh, the US dollar um, again you'd really want the US dollar to start to uh, um, to, to devalue for gold to e go even higher I think the longer the um, the dollar remains slightly strong, could potentially cap uh, gold anyway, but um, let's see what happens. But overall, from, a, I guess, a more of a macro perspective, as we head into the election cycle, the, uh, you know, um, there's there's pressure on the Fed, I guess, to, uh, to, to cut rates, or there should have been. And so let's see what happens there. But also as well from a um, China, uh, perspective the people's bank of china buys gold for 17th month as prices hit records the china's gold reserves rose to 72.74 million troy ounces data and gold hits records um, on um, rate cut expectations central bank buying and so you know we are heading into potentially we should be heading into at least um, the rate cutting cycle and that is um, you know whether it's delayed to you know from June to July ultimately um, you know the uh, the central banks uh, are looking to cut and I think the market is just really getting ahead of that and it's got ahead of that since February since early February so um, yeah let's see what happens with with gold but it looks like obviously the path of these resistance is you know to the upside and so it's really about buying on um, pullbacks if you want to be a buyer on a pullback so that's where we are with the analysis for the week once again uh, you know if you want access to um, the mentoring group discord group as well as you know the fundamental analysis spreadsheet which we use as well as you know hours and hours of hours of content thousands of videos of content fundamental analysis technical analysis a lot deeper than what I show you on YouTube then um, you know today's going to be the last day uh, for at least another you know two to three months so don't forget to uh, um, you know if you want to join up then you can if not again as I said I've got plenty of content on my YouTube channel uh, that you can absorb so hope you have a great trading week take care all the best and